record it now. Now, get the chart out, look at it. We're going to be using it today. I mean, not a whole lot of it, but we're going to use it. Is this going to be hard for you, Mr. Andrew? As long as you follow the directions, it's not. Where do I get one of those chairs? Up here. If you don't have one of these, come get it. Um, now, you're going to look. You're going to look at this. You've got moles. and Yesterday, we just did this. We went from moles to moles, nothing fancy. Uh, today, we are going to go from mass of something to mass of another thing. That's the, the whole path we're taking. That's it. So this is three steps we got to put on one line. Just three. It's not really that big of a deal. It's just you got to be organized. What? So pretty much we're going from mass to moles, moles to moles, and moles to mass. Yep. So, yeah, you just do what it says. I mean, but today all we're doing, we're going mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to, to mass again. That's it. So it's three steps following the chart. I mean, and, and that's it. So let me show you how to do it. I'm going to show you, uh, I don't know, one or two examples, and that'll be it. And then uh, I'll let you work. So. Oh, but tomorrow and the next day we will be involving everything else. Like we'll be, we'll be breaking it up now to where you're going to be going. You know, particles up to volume, and you know it'll be more of a, a broader thing. But today we're just doing you know simple again, mass to mass. Now these, however, last last thing, these problems will seem relatively easy once you see them done, but they can be worded very very trickily. Trickily, is that a word? <laughs> they, they can be very worded in a tricky manner, okay? And that is uh, something that we will that you'll be practicing in the next couple of days is the complicated versions. If you haven't figured it out by now, a major part of what we do is, uh, you know, making you guys be critical thinkers and able to figure out what's being asked, since that's 90% of what life is anyway, right? So, uh, all right, let's uh, let's get going. I guess I don't need to record that part, do I? I didn't, didn't write anything. But anyway, we'll leave it up there if anybody wants to hear. So uh, here's an equation. Is it balanced? That's, that's the basic formula. Yes. We got one m on each yeah. one mg, two yeah, h's, yeah. two cl's. Yeah, it's balanced. It's a simple equation. Wait, uh, no, I'm making one up. No, I'm making these up. These are examples. You will do all problems assigned on your own. So, example. Okay, this is how the question, a simple question will be asked. How many grams of magnesium chloride will be formed if 45.7 grams magnesium reacts with excess HCl. Yeah, I know. For my own amusement. So, that's a pretty standard problem. It's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of confusing verbiage or words. It's just like, what do you want? That's all. We like that. So we've got 45.7 grams of magnesium. Just right away, let's write that out so we, you know, we can do that. 45.7 grams magnesium. Now try to save as much space as you can because you're going to use a lot of it. Now this is asking how many grams of magnesium chloride. So which of these four compounds is magnesium chloride? MgCl2, yeah. So it's asking for this. It's giving us 45.7 grams of this, and uh, it's telling us we have excess this. So, do we care about HCl at all? No. No, we don't. Excess means you ignore it. That's good that you are good with that. Now, we're using our little chart here. We have grams of magnesium, and we want to get grams of magnesium chloride. So, to do that, we're going to do three steps. We're going to go mass to moles of A, so moles of magnesium. Let's convert that right now. So you go grams, 
Now, you follow the chart, it tells you you're going to divide by the atomic mass of magnesium, which, you know, you've been doing for two weeks now. So, what is the uh, mass of magnesium? I mean, I think I know. Is it 24.31? 24 okay. Yeah. Is that good? Okay. So, one mole of magnesium is equal to 24, what did I say, 0.31? 0 0.31 grams of magnesium. Okay. You with me to that point? Yes. Convert it. We're just do a simple mole conversion. Next. We now are at moles of magnesium, and we want to get moles of magnesium chloride. So we're going from moles of A to moles of B. Okay. So the next step is simply to take the coefficient ratio. So moles of magnesium goes in the bottom. Moles of MgCl2 goes on the top. And what do we uh, what do we put there? What do we put for magnesium? What is magnesium's coefficient? One. Okay. What about magnesium chloride? One. Okay, that's nice and easy. Rarely will it ever be one to one, but you know it works. Cool. Do this step, even if it's one to one. Do this step. Because we have moles of magnesium down here, and when we're converting from moles of one substance to moles of another, we look at the ratios. There's nothing in front of magnesium, so it's one. And there's nothing in front of magnesium chloride, so it's one again. That's how you do it. Pardon? Now, what? yeah, one more step. Last one, easy one. You're at moles of magnesium chloride. You want to go to mass of magnesium chloride, so as you go out, you multiply by the atomic mass. So that's what this chart will tell you. So, in, a, in addition, you don't even need the chart because you can just be writing in your units. We want grams of MgCl2. So, one mole is equal to, what is the, uh, what is the mass of magnesium chloride? Uh, so, magnesium is 24.31, chloride is 35.45. We need two of those. What? It's 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.21. 95.